On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have all the news on the start of the black fishing season on the Long Island Sound with Fred Galifaro and Mark McGowan. And Matt Broderick has more tips on targeting these tog. Lots of reports that the fall run is underway on the South Shore. We have Paul McCain with a report from the Connecticut River. On the offshore scene, Tony Gatto has an update. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Thanks to all of you who pointed out my bad edit on last week's video. It happens, and it probably won't be the last time it happens. Bergen Bay Docks canceled last week's Bass and Shark Tournament, and it's rescheduled for this weekend. Visit BergenBayDocks.com for all the details. Let's check in with this coming weekend's weather outlook with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, anglers, let's check the weekend forecast, see what we got going on. It's like another split decision weekend. I think uh, you know, Sunday is going to be the better day, but let's check the water temps out. We got mostly some low to mid 60s, uh, cooling down as usual. And the Saturday morning doesn't look too great. We got that big front coming through overnight Friday into Saturday. There'll be some showers, some storms, and then rough seas, four to eight, very close to shore. Eventually, Saturday midday afternoon could be kind of a late start type of day. It gets better in the ocean there. The beaches should be okay by midday afternoon. The sound should be okay. Look at all the blue coming in. It gets much better by Sunday morning. If you want to do some ocean fishing, some bass, go offshore a bit, that will be the day to do it. A little bit better on Sunday, general two to four, one to two in the sound. So that looks a lot better. The winds will be lighter. Futurecast, you know, Saturday we got some green with the leftovers of that front coming through. So the morning, five, six, seven a.m. Not too good, gusty northwest breeze till about about noontime or so. And then, you know, the winds will subside late afternoon, maybe down to 10 to 15. But it's going to be a pretty good shop there all day Saturday. Saturday night, winds subside, south-southeast breeze, you know, a little return flow for Sunday, but much better. The waves should be down a bit, should be nicer. There's high tide Saturday, north shore for the midday, south shore for early morning. It's a chilly day on Saturday, cool day in the 50s, and then we'll back to some 60s on Sunday a little better. Check the guru and see what we got going on here. And there's your Saturday. Notice we got uh, you know some colors here. Pretty good uh, northwest flow coming in, gusty 15 to 20. And there's the uh, nicer weather on Sunday. See right there, that's uh, Sunday. Light and variable going southeast late in the day. That should be a, a nicer day for fishing. So again, looks like Sunday pick of the weekend. Uh, be safe as always. Catch them up. Tim, back to you. Stay tuned. Later in the broadcast, Rich has a report from Deb's Inlet. With the TOG update, we have Fisherman Senior Editor, Fred Galifaro. Hey, Tim. Yeah, blackfish season got off to a really good start on Sunday for North Shore anglers. Captain Mike Baccio of the charter boat Primetime and, Glen and Gen Glow uh, really banged them up on Sunday. Uh, started off a little slow because of tide conditions, but by the end of the day, they nearly had a full boat limit of quality TOG. Uh, South Shore fishing that opens this Thursday, that's today. Uh, now, everybody else will be in the game, um, getting good reports of bycatches on the south shore and the inlets and on the inshore reefs and wrecks. So, uh, looks like we've got a good blackfish season in play. And uh, on the north shore, you've got a three fish bag limit. On the south shore, it's a four fish bag limit. Size limit is 16 inches across the board. As far as the fall striped bass run goes, going strong right up until all the wind we had on Monday and Tuesday, all that heavy east wind. Um, I was out Saturday in Montauk. We had blitz fishing on the north side uh, Saturday afternoon. A lot of folks got into that. Um, and it just looks like it's shaping up to be a really good fall season. Also, for you surf guys, just got word today uh, from Cookie at Libba. Uh, he's been working on it. And the open beach at Cupsog is now open to four-wheel drive. You can drive the outer beach. It was delayed due to the extended uh, bathing season or park season. Uh, for Cupsog. Again, everything's shaping up really good. Make some time, get out there, and have some fun. Winter will be here before you know it. Long Island Managing Editor Matthew Broderick has a great video tip targeting blackfish from the shore. Let's check it out. Typically, blackfish are usually a species caught off the boat, but I'm here to tell you that they can be caught off the shore as well. I captured some video for you guys, and we're going to take a look. First thing I'll do is I'll find a rocky perch to stand upon when I'm fishing for these fish. I'll cast it some structure. For example, there's a, a boulder that is um, exposed in the water to my left on the screen. Cast out to it to the right side of it and I'll let the jig sink to the bottom. Be ready for your hit because if they're there, they'll hit right away. Right now, I'm just getting that jig down to the bottom, making sure I have contact with the bottom. That's important. 
You're gonna see the blackfish pick up the jig right about now. As he takes the jig, you wanna let him have it and set the hook. Keep the rod tip high, keep reeling, keep him out of the rocks. These fish will try and dive right in the rocks on you. Keep it coming. Keep the rod tip high, that's important. These fish always try and dive into the rocks and that will result in a break off if you drop that tip. Make sure you have solid footing on that rock too. As I work the fish in, I make sure to avoid other rocks in the area so it doesn't break me off. Using a longer leader makes it easier to pull this fish up on the rock as you will see right here. Very easily I pull the fish up on the rock, grab the jig that I'm using, secure the fish, one, two, three, jig is out right here. The jig comes out and the fish goes back in safely released. From Montauk, we have Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thanks, Tim. Well, greetings from Montauk. Another fabulous week out fishing. Um, even though the weather wasn't the best this past weekend, we were still able to get out and do some uh, quality fishing. Everyone's very excited for opening day of Blackfish on the 15th, which is the same day as this report. Um, from what we can gather, black fishing is going to be very good this year. Um, get out, call a charter boat, get out and catch some blackfish. Um, in regards to uh, fly fishing and light tackle, still plenty of false albacore around. Um, the big word on the street though is the amount of bass that is out here. There's just like miles of bass um, boiling on the surface. So it's a great opportunity to get out if you're a novice fly fisherman, you can hone your skills. There's plenty of fish to catch. It's great fishing for the kids. We've been lucky enough to have a lot of kids out this year. Um, but the big story is definitely the surf casting. From Shaguan Point to Montauk Lighthouse, there's great opportunity to get out there and do some surf casting. They're not the biggest fish in the world, but they're big quality fish. So uh, get out and enjoy. Have a good weekend. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Uh, fishing is good and not so good. If you have a boat, it's great. Uh, there's been a lot of a lot of uh, bait around. Bunker pods outside of Mariches, also outside of Shinnecock, uh, a little bit more prevalent to the east of Shinnecock. Um, so being able to chase those bunker pods, you're going to get on the bass. Uh, a lot of guys also in Mariches have had some really good luck with spot. Uh, not not really a local species, but bass candy basically. Uh, best setup seems to be an egg sinker on your braid, barrel swivel, and uh, about a four to five foot leader uh, with a circle hook. <laughs> um, big fan of the circle hook and they're gonna be mandatory next year. So if you're not fishing them now, great time to start to get used to it. Off the beach, it's been a little bit slow. I predominantly fish the sunset bite. I haven't had a lot of luck. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of brown water, um, but the guys that are fishing throughout the night and really, really putting the hours in, guys like the crew from Bass Hole Surf Casting, they're seeing some patterns emerging and believe, and like most of us, that the new moon is really going to, um, you know, kick things up a level. So um, if you can get out to Montauk, I got out there over the weekend with my son. He got his first uh, first bass, uh, pretty sure it was a keeper that we didn't keep, in a northeast wind on the north side, and it's just bonkers how many fish are out there. We'll see what happens if any of those fish move west and the beaches around here uh, start to come alive a little bit, you know, for that day bite. Um, there is a lot of bait around, a lot of adult bunker. You can see a lot of birds way out of casting distance from the beach, but they do come in occasionally. Uh, first light has also been a bit of a productive bite on some smaller fish. People have some luck on and the bays at night as well uh, when you know your spots and you're putting your time in. So put the time in, you're gonna be rewarded. Enjoy this weekend, uh, Blackfish right around the corner. Check out Matt Broderick's uh, video on our YouTube channel about uh, using jigs to target them from the shore. Um, the sea bass and porgy bite, you know, is still going strong, bigger bag limit there. So looks like this weekend should be some windows to get out there by boat and the beach is always open. Enjoy, catch them up. Back to you, Tim. Mark McGowan of Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle has this to report from the North Shore. Hey, great seeing you again this week. Listen, the black fishing opening day last Sunday was dynamite up here on the North Shore. I mean, a lot of people had keepers. There were tons of shorts as well, but the action was really nonstop. You could have mixed it in with some jigging for bluefish or striped bass gone out. 
plenty of sea bass in the mix along with uh, porgies and such. So a lot, a lot of action. As far as the bait goes, we've got uh, a lot of bait in the back. They're starting to look a little funky. I've seen a major stage moving of uh, adult bunker. They've gone from the back of the harbors out almost to the mouth. So given that we're right around mid-October with this new moon that's coming up, uh, new moon's coming on the 16th, which is this Friday. And uh, I'm really expecting a lot of this bait to do a major shift. We've got the top of the 60s now as it drops down each night is getting cooler you've got cooler mornings this really with the sun setting the change of the angle of the sun the fall run is really here to go i mean it's fantastic and uh if you're an albi buff they've been on the north shore they've been on the south shore um you gotta find them they seem to be pretty sketchy and with the way that we've had these winds this past week it's kind of it's kind of rough catching on to them so it's been a lot of surf casting going on a lot of small bass a lot of like bluefish you see the four to five pound range but people are catching all over and that's the greatest part whether you're over by nessie river you're in cold spring harbor you're working in the harbor or the back over here in, in northport or huntington centerport areas everybody is catching fish and it's really fantastic i don't see so many snappers now they seem to have moved off we see the beach how the beach is working for those folks that want to go down and go porgy fishing i've seen a lot of the regulars slow down in that area and everybody seems to be concentrating on these blackfish and in regards to blackfish you want to make sure your baits whether you're using asian crab or green crab are really really fresh um at our shop we always keep them in floating pens this way there there's not a natural buildup of all the toxins inside so remember you're cutting them you're using your hands you always want to keep rinsing your hands in between the bait cuttings because remember these green crabs are particularly asian crabs they give off uh, a lot of toxins they're always urinating on themselves and so you want to keep them clean and that's a very very important tip i hope to see you out there i really hope you enjoyed this report and until next time i bid you peace tight lines Steigercraft builds boats by the same people at Fisher All Waters. That's why serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Tim. Here I am. I'm out with uh, Tony Altar and uh, Mark Malinowski. Uh, from Hooks and Brooks Guide Service. We actually are at the Kennet Court and we uh, guided the New York City, New York Athletic Club from New York City. Uh, we had a great day. Tough fishing in the sense we had a lot of rain last night. The rivers are up a little bit, but there are nice fish here. What, one of the guys, uh, he took a picture. He, we had 16 inch, 17 inch uh, rainbows. A lot of 12 to 14 inch rainbows. Uh, it's been good. But the river's high. It will be dropping. And in a couple days, this is going to be in excellent shape. Now, to get back onto the salt water, uh, Jimmy P, he actually went out to Montauk this week and uh, fishing with Tim O'Rourke, Captain Tim O'Rourke. Uh, he <laughs> caught his first Albie on the fly. But then the big blow came and it, it was putting everything down, and most of the captains had to stay in. I went out on Thursday night and I learned a lot. Like, uh, maybe I should have had my surf rod. It was too windy. But it was really good. We had a great time. Um, so until next week, tight lines, everybody, and get out there and fish. For the Fire Island area and the Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Tim. Fire Island report. Looks like a good weekend coming up. Uh, striped bass now in the ocean on bunker pods around Fire Island. Inside on plugs and bait. Uh, still a lot of bottom fish around. Blackfish season now is open. And uh, reports of people catching... Uh, bluefin tuna on bunker spoons while trolling for striped bass, uh, 60 pound class fish. So kind of crazy. If you go out there, make sure you have some pretty good tackle if you're dragging those spoons and mojos. So you might be in for a real surprise. But it looks like it should be a great weekend. Some bluefish around too. I mean, now it's a little bit of everything and the water's chilled down. Today it was 60 and that's excellent temperature. It really gets the fish moving. The water got nice and clean. So it should be an excellent weekend to fish and I think it's going to be hot action around Fire Island. That's it for this week, Tim. Have a great week. Talk to you next. Bye-bye. Check this out. Teddy Prager of Seaford was trolling for bass on Sunday when he nailed his thresher right off the beach. And on the beach, Joe Ben Savenga was at it again catching schoolies not far from where that thresher was caught off of Jones Beach. 
Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. Check out a Seapro powered by Suzuki. New models are in stock now, but they may not last. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. From Oceanside, we have Captain Joey Leggio. Hey, Tim. What's going on today, buddy? Uh, the report out of the Debs Inlet Reynolds Channel area. Uh, the bays has the bass, the blues. So, you know, there's plenty to be caught there. The bridges, the dock lines, clam chumming, bucktail, and whatever it may be. I uh, just got back myself, took out a buddy, and we ran to the back bays and we caught a few bass and blues on the bucktails with the fat cow strips. The lure of choice has been basically a white spro, three quarter ounce to one ounce bucktail, and you tip that with the chartreuse uh, eel strip lures. On the ocean scene, I don't know what's going on, but there's really not too much bass being had, but there are tuna being caught and threshers, so I guess that's not a bad thing. But uh, anybody, everybody I talk to is saying the same thing. The thresher sharks are harassing the bunker spoons and the mojos. And also, I don't know if you guys heard about that tuna, approximately about 120 pounds that was caught on a bunker spoon. And the guys did land it and get it in. That's a pretty cool catch. Uh, Blackfish season's opening, I believe, tomorrow. So that's another thing that we'll get out there and try. But uh, that's basically my report. The bass and the blues are in the bay. The bait's still there. The peanut bunker all over the place. And that's what's happening in my area. And I'll talk to you later, brother. With our offshore report, let's check in with Tony Gatto. Thanks, Tim. From the canyons, there is word of a nice yellowfin bite just short of West Atlantis. The fish are in a 70-pound class and have been trolled and chunked in and around Dolphin. Scott Cusick, Louis Sarah, and Craig Tamalo nailed this big eye on the Kelly Lynn. Captain Jazzy Jeff out of Shinnecock trolled up some nice longfin albacore, some yellowfin, and this nice wahoo just north of the dip. There are also reports of yellowfin caught from the dip to just south of the Cornbury wreck. The Alyssa Ann out of Montauk was back out on the sharking grounds again this week, and this time it was a nice thresher, weighing in at 211 pounds. During the fight, it put on quite a show, airing out five times. A few makels were also reported this week. Here is a shot of Joe Faust with a nice 200 pound mako. Sunday into Monday is looking fishable. If you get out there and you have some reports, drop me a line. Back to you, Tim. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin and I fished yesterday out of Deb's Inlet. Rich, how'd it go? All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, we had some fun this morning. We were out in the ocean. We uh, found some bait. We found a few birds, and we found a few bass, some really nice bass, some schoolies, and a couple fish up to uh, 35, 36 inches that we released today. Catching them on these little lead heads and the you know, Berkeley 4-inch pearl white grubs. Worked very well today. Both Tim and I both had some nice fish. It was very enjoyable. Best starting to move. Find the bait, find the birds. Go get them. Wow. He's done. Nice job. Oh. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Hey, thanks, Tim. What's going on, guys? So right off the bat, I'm going to apologize. I don't have any video. I'm having problems with my camera. Anyway, moving forward, I've been spending my time fishing the bridges in the back bays these last couple days because there's been so many fish around. I can't give you an exact location because it's been so good. But I've been looking on top, and these fish have been in the shadow lines in the dozens, lined up on spearing whatever else small baits coming through in the incoming tide. And I've been capitalizing on that with small paddle tails, things like the rain fish, just small profiles. When the current picks up and they go down, I've been throwing bucktails, and that's been working out. So I'm going to hope to get some video to you guys soon. Anyway, we have some good news here. My buddy Joe Faust on another outlet had Land Shark Outdoors out with him from Florida. And they got a beautiful mako, and there's going to be a catch and cook video on Land Shark Outdoors. So go check him out. And again, Joe Faust on another outlet. Good job, guys. Raul Ortiz, the urban angler, and his son Jace have been catching everything from porgies to small sea bass in the western sound on the incoming tide and releasing them all. And at night, on the ebb, Raul has been releasing schoolies. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest and win this Old Town Autopilot Kayak worth 4000 bucks. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. So much going on this time of the year, so take advantage of it while you can. Stay safe and see you right here next week at the all-new Fisherman.com.